The foreign chambers of commerce in the Philippines have issued a statement saying the way to get to fair and competitive pay is what they say is a new two-track system. By competitive pay, they mean close to wages in neighboring or rival countries. The first track is a minimum wage set slightly above the poverty level. The other is pay based on productivity. The chambers of commerce say last year's increase was more than needed and can cover this year's inflation. Joining us from Makati is the president of the American Chamber of Commerce, Rick Jennings. Thanks very much for joining us, Rick. Thanks, Coco. Thanks for having us. Okay, you know, whenever there's a wage, uh, wage increase petition or a wage increase decision, the labor groups will always say it's too little. Business groups will usually always say it's too high. So before I ask you whether last week's adjustment was, was too high or not, let's talk about this two-track system. Um, you're saying that the, the, the wage board should set the minimum wage close to uh, just above the poverty level and leave the rest to productivity pay. How is that different from what we're doing now? Well, Coco, it would, uh, it would enable, first of all, uh, to have a, a living wage for people coming into the uh, labor force. And this is why there needs to be a minimum wage that's, that's above the, the poverty level. And then on the second tier, have for specific uh, job sectors, categories, have that tied to productivity so that uh, wage increases go up as the country's productivity increases. And so in this way, uh, there's an, there is an opportunity for more people to join the, uh, the uh, workforce and the Philippines stays competitive with, uh, with its neighbors. So that, uh, that productivity part, that second track that you're talking about, that would, still, that would be set by the same tripartite the body that, that sets the minimum wage, Rick? Uh, yes. Um, uh, having, the, um, having the different uh, the bodies, the 13 bodies, uh, set to the minimum wages are, um, uh, are, are fine. It's just the methodology that's being used. Right. And, you know, uh, Coco, here's, here's the concern. Uh, take a look at uh, the minimum wages across the region, and you'll see... Uh, countries such as Vietnam, Cambodia, Indonesia, uh, they're earning uh, a minimum wage is, a, is around two to three dollars a day. Uh, you've got China, who is who is in the three to four dollars a day category, and uh, and then the Philippines is at nine dollars a day. So when you compare it that way, uh, we're we're concerned about the country's ability to attract new jobs. And the Philippines has a, a terrific opportunity right now uh, with increasing wage costs across, uh, across China, with um, recent uh, troubles in uh, Japan and Thailand with, uh, with catastrophes where uh, companies are wishing to, uh, to move businesses, uh, spread out the, the risk, so to speak. And so we would uh, we'd like to see the Philippines take advantage of that. I guess for the labor groups to buy into buy into the theory that we were, we we're proposing here, um, maybe we could, we could try to tell them how long will it be before wages? Because you're saying let's keep wages uh, wage increases relatively uh, low or, or stable, so that we attract more jobs. Uh, how long? How many years will it take before uh, wages can accelerate upward again? Well, I, I think it it, it will. Uh, it will depend on productivity in the um, in the Philippines. So, uh, as uh, as industries become more product productive, then it's it's easy to justify wage increases, and um, and that depends on what industries are here. And uh, you know, there there are some industries that are are doing very well, particularly the the BPO sector, as we all know. Um, and uh, uh, but there are opportunities for more people to come to the workforce. You mentioned the, uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, social weather station uh, survey this morning in the, in the business world where you know, the unemployment is, uh, is in the range of 14 million adults. So this wage increase, it only applies to the formal sector. It may benefit two or three million people. Uh, at the same time, it makes the country less competitive and it doesn't benefit the people that can't find work. And in fact, as we know, as, as 
in economics 101 as, as labor costs increase um, then, it, then uh, so does uh, unemployment. And so that's, that's our concern. We certainly want to, want to see fair increases, but fair and competitive increases that, that allows for more job creation. Now, in your statement, you say that last, week, last year's increase was more than was needed last year and therefore can make up for all or some of uh, this year's inflation. Do you find the increase granted last week at the, uh, in, in Metro Manila to be too much and also inflationary? Uh, judging by what we've seen, if these are the final numbers, then it, it seems like it's quite aggressive. And, um, and so it, it is indeed um, pushing up minimum wage. And again, I'm, I'm basing that off of the, uh, the competition as well as, as just simply looking at the inflation rate. Uh, will, will, uh, will companies react, uh, or how quickly will companies react to this? Um, all labor groups, whether they're local or foreign, will say um, some companies may cut jobs, some companies may even just close down. How soon would, would we see that kind of effect? Would it take, for example, would it happen this year, would it take three years or so of, of aggressive uh, wage increases before that happens? Well, you know, Coco, it's, it, it's hard to say uh, what effects it will immediately have in the, in the labor force. You know, for the American Chamber of Commerce, we have 650 members and, um, and our companies tend to hire well above minimum wage. So for, for our businesses, it will not have an immediate or direct impact. But for, uh, you know, let's take, let's take the, the garment industry, for example, or garment, garment and footwear, a lot of those, uh, that industry has gone elsewhere over the past decade uh, because of the, the rising minimum wage. So that, that's our concern is, is for the nation and, um, and the president's desire for job creation. Uh, that's why it's important to remain competitive. Okay, Rick, thank you very much for joining us. Wish we had more time. We'll get you back uh, sometime when we, when we do have that more time. Thanks, Rick. Thank you so much, Coco. Thanks a lot.